What's in a name? Nelligan, Ferrani, Couteau, Van Lanscoot. These four last names came together and were cancelled out based on to which male held which name. My grandmother's father held the last name Nelligan, but he had a daughter, thus the last name would not survive oh. the marriage. It fell to Ferrani, my grandfather's father's last name. My father's mother's last name, Couteau, carried over to her from her father, who carried the name through marriage and generations past. But alas, my great-grandfather had himself a daughter, and so the last name did not survive Ooh. the marriage. Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Thoughts Piece by me, ya boy, Joe Van. Today's topic for your consideration is names. My mother and father got married, and my mother dropped her last name, Ferrani. Ah! I was born with the last name Van Lanscoot. This rule of last names is not a law, so people don't need to do this, but for generations upon generations, it has been a cultural norm. Which culture, you may ask? Fucking all of them. Though, there are some cultures that keep both last names, such as the Philippines. But, of course, it is always arranged that the male surname comes first and the female surname comes second. It's little things like these that have done ridiculous, terrible wonders throughout history at demeaning an entire half of the human race and, along with other means, subjugating them into submission and compliance. Some people have looked at the English name human or woman as continued examples of the patriarchy due to the core man, but that is not true. Old English names for the different sexes were Wurman and Wiffman, later evolving alongside the English language in general to just becoming man and woman. But still, names hold immense power over people. If it didn't, people wouldn't care to carry surnames over with marriage. Imagine if kids weren't given surnames at all. In certain Egyptian cultures, this is true. Children simply hold their mother and father's first names as their complete name. There is a lot in a name. From my four grandparents, you can deduce my ethnicity and my ancestors' countries of origin. Ireland, Italy, not France, but the French side of Belgium, and Belgium again. Then there are the things that get lost in dropped surnames. As it would happen, I also have some ancestry in Spain. I only know this because of oral history, but I'm sure 23andMe would have corroborated that. My partner, on the other hand, has no clue where her family line is from. Her last name is British, but there may also have been some German further back. That's all she knows. If we, as a society, felt inclined, we could have made it so that all surnames carry over to the next of kin. There is a problem with this, of course, though, being the compounding force of multiplication. Two surnames carry over, then someone marries, doubling it for the next of kin. Next generation marries, and then it doubles again. So, starting from two surnames, in three generations, you would have a child listing 16 names behind them. No need for middle names at that point. Bringing that up, middle names, it is interesting that most cultures find it important for a person to have at least three names. First names, like John, are repeated all over the place. You can name your child John after your brother, their uncle. If the surname Doe remains the same, then it would get confusing to identify a person, thus the middle name helps. John Lee Doe or John Sam Doe. But now, on to the point of identifying someone or one's own self, here we find the real reason behind names, insofar as I understand it. Identity. Why have names in the first place? To differentiate each other, be it on an individual level or by family. We as a species have an intrinsic need for identity. We want to feel special, unique, and our own. Sure, I'm a Van Lanscoot. I am also Joe. Funny that I didn't choose either of those for myself, but my whole life, I've never come across another Joseph Van Lanscoot. The middle name James wasn't very necessary then. If someone shouted my name in a crowd, my brain would instantly ping with a that's me thought. Identity remains. While I didn't choose it, I have come to settle in the name given to me. 
I've made small tweaks to it, such as my shorthand name, Joe Van. Also, when I was younger, I gave myself the name Joe Van Lightly, and even made a website with that name. Now talking about made up stuff, people aside, I also have a name for my car, Kazwa. It's basically just the first part of the license plate. Most to all people name their pets, and facilities such as zoos and sanctuaries name the animals that reside within them. From Harambe, to Kanzi, to Crystal, to Darwin, and to Ken, we seem to find great joy in naming things. So much so that scientists who perform animal testing are held to the rule that they are not to name the animal because once you identify with it, to then put the animal down becomes a harrowing task. Names matter. They give personality to things, from animals to inanimate objects. They ground us, from having an identity to remembering our family lines. The human mind, as I've said so many times before, is a narrative, pattern-seeking mechanism. We label things. Without labels, we become afloat, detached. Names are important for us to remember, categorize, and function in our world. I know people who have changed their name. I know people who have kept their maiden name after marriage. People who don't care about their name. And people like me who find names interesting. Funny that I'm terrible at remembering names. Maybe that's why I care so much than the average person. Because I have to. Now, before clocking things out, I have for you one final fun tidbit. I looked up the longest recorded name and found uh, this from Guinness World Records. Clocking in at 171 characters, the world's longest name belongs to this person, Adolf Blaine Charles David Earl Frederick. Jeez, Louise. <laughs> I thought like I I shouldn't try that, but then I was like, no, 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 no. I got it's gonna be terrible, but I'll at least give the tiniest little whirl at it. So there you go. That's something. Now, according to user Mihail Kondov, quote, the second part of his name was a story written in German without spaces alongside it that roughly translates to Wolfenschlenheisenbergenhof, whose ancestors were conscientious shepherds whose sheep were all well cared for and protected from attack by their rapacious enemies, whose ancestors 12,000 years ago appeared before the first Earthmen, the spaceship used the light as its origin of power, started its long journey between celestial space in search of the stars which had habitable planets circling, and where new race of intelligent humanity could reproduce and enjoy lifelong joy and tranquility, with not the fear of attack from other intelligent minds from between celestial space. <laughs> yeah. I have nothing to contribute here other than either this user faked this or cool story broke by the person with the name. And actually, that is true. In the Guinness World Record, it is noted that the person's great-great-grandfather uh, sort of made up this name. So it's not like this name carried over like from a thousand years ago. It's kind of recent. But either way, that has been another thoughts piece by me, ya boy, Joe Van. Thank you, thank you, as always, for checking this one out. I appreciate you all to no end and ask you to remember to keep on thinking. If you liked this, please like and subscribe for more. And until next time, ciao for now. Peace.